Greetings folks. In this video, we're going to take a look at some RC circuits. Check out those exponentially based rise and fall waveforms, the charge and discharge waveforms. And we're also going to leverage a little bit of Thevenin's theorem along the way. So here we are in Tina TI, and I've got a nice little circuit here. Basically, this is the same circuit we looked at in the Thevenin's theorem video. The difference is I've changed um, up my source a little bit, and my load now is a one microfarad capacitor. So an easy way to verify what's going on here is to thevenize this circuit. Now, when we thevenize looking in for our thev, we would short the voltage source to 300 and 600, wind up in parallel, that's 200, and that winds up in series with the 800, so we have our 1,000 ohms over here. The open circuit voltage would be the Thevenin voltage. And when we unload this, the 800 just sits out here to an open. So it's really the voltage across the 600, which would be two thirds of the source. And this source is a 12 volt source. Now what I've done here is produced a pulse source. It starts at zero, goes up to 12, stays at 12 for 10 milliseconds, drops back to zero, stays there. So this source is identical, except instead of being 12 volts, it's 8 volts, right? The Thevenin amplitude. But the timing is identical. Now, with a 1,000 ohm resistor and a 1 microfarad capacitor, the time constant would be 1K times 1 micro or 1 millisecond. So steady state is reached in 5 time constants or 5 milliseconds. That's why I chose a 10 millisecond pulse for the uh, source voltage here. So we'll actually be able to see the capacitor voltage, in other words, V load 2, rise up. In this case, it should rise up to 8 volts, and it should take around 5 milliseconds to do that. And then when this source goes back to 0 volts, that's essentially like shorting this to ground. Now the cap will act as a source, like a battery, and it will discharge through our Thevenin, producing an inverted polarity. Right? It's going to be plus on this side, minus on that side, so that's going to flip. But that's going to go from 8 volts and then work its way back towards 0, right? Negative 8, back towards 0, again, 5 milliseconds, because we haven't changed the ROC value any. What should happen is that V load 2 and V load should be identical, right? That's the whole point of Thevenin's theorem. So let's see what we get here, right? We'll just do a, uh, a transient analysis on this. So I'm going to run this from 0 to 20 milliseconds, so we'll see that full rise portion and the full fall portion. Okay, um, I'm going to alter some of the colors here so that we can see this a little bit better. Maybe make this a nice uh, blue. And perhaps we'll make uh, this rising curve something a little bit more exciting. Um, how about fuchsia? Ooh, look at that. Okay, now let's grab our little label here, and it looks like something's missing. V load appears to be missing, right? I mean, here's E Thevenin. We can see that thing's going from zero. There's the eight volts. Ten milliseconds later, drops to zero and stays there. We can see some rising and falling potentials. What the heck happened to V load? Well, as I said, V load and V load two should be the same thing. So Let's just separate out the curves, okay? And sure enough, there's the green, there's the fuchsia, right? V load and V load two, those are identical curves. So that very nicely uh, verifies up Thevenin's theorem for us, right? In another sort of way. But in any case, there's our Thevenin voltage, the square, there's our uh, voltage across the resistor, and then the capacitor voltages. So let's put those back together so we can see what's really going on here. Now remember, KVL says that the drop across the cap and the drop across resistor have to add up to whatever the source is. So in this section, right, I got 8 volts. So the blue plus the fuchsia has to equal that, and we can see that's exactly what's happening. So here's the capacitor rising up with this exponentially based sort of rise. It takes five milliseconds, five time constants to get 
virtually there. Okay, meanwhile, the uh, voltage developed across the resistor decreases. And remember that also is the shape of the current. All right, so the current starts off at 8 volts divided by 1K or 8 milliamps. So if this was a current plot, we'd be at 8 milliamps and it would drive down there to zero. So here we are at steady state. Right, basically, the cap is looking like an open. So we see all the voltage across the cap and nothing across the resistor. Then we basically short this. Right? This becomes a short, that's zero volts. Cap acts as a source and discharges in a counterclockwise direction through our Thevenin. So here we see the cap voltage. It's going to decrease as it's discharging. But again, KVL says these two things have to equal the source. So this positive voltage is reflected with a negative voltage across the resistor. Plus 8, minus 8. And those things, again, come together five time constants down the road. In this case, at 15 milliseconds, right? 10 to 15, there's our 5 millisecond spacing. And now we're back in a new form of steady state, right? A zero volt uh, uh, source for steady state. Okay? Looking very nice here.